Antarctica, a sprawling expanse veiled in ice and surrounded by a vast sea, stands in stark contrast to its northern counterpart, the Arctic, which is essentially an icy ocean encircled by land. Its sheer magnitude dwarfs Europe, and even during summer it remains a colossal size. Regardless, Antarctica reigns as the planet's paramount, a pinnacle of altitude, aridity, tempestuous winds, and unrelenting cold. In its frozen embrace, the mercury can plummet to an astonishing minus 89 degrees Celsius. Despite the harsh conditions, so much scientific research is taking place here, leading to many incredible recent Antarctic scientific discoveries. Join us as we dig deep into the most bizarre things hidden right underneath Antarctica. Number 12. 90-million-year-old rainforest. Once upon a time, there was a swampy rainforest near the bottom of the world. Scientists have discovered remnants of a swampy temperate rainforest that thrived in Antarctica about 90 million years ago. They were surprised to find fossil remnants of this forest in a sediment core sample retrieved in February 2017 from the ocean floor in the Amundsen Sea off the coast of West Antarctica. This sample contained ancient forest soil with an abundance of fossilized plant pollen and spores. CT scans revealed a dense network of fossilized plant roots. What's astonishing about this discovery is its location. 90 million years ago, this West Antarctic forest was just 900 kilometers from the then South Pole. Yet its climate was surprisingly mild. The scientists think these mild conditions, an annual mean temperature of about 12 degrees Celsius, were possible because there was no significant ice sheet across Antarctica. It appears that carbon dioxide concentrations were much higher than previously thought. Their findings were published in the peer-reviewed journal Nature. The core sample with fossilized Cretaceous forest soil was collected near Pine Island Glacier in West Antarctica using a portable seafloor drill rig operated from the research ship RV Polarstern. Johann Klegis, a geologist at the Alfred Wegener Institute and the paper's lead author, commented on the sample in a statement. During the initial shipboard assessments, the unusual coloration of the sediment layer quickly caught our attention. It clearly differed from the layers above it. Moreover, the first analyses indicated that at a depth of 27 to 30 meters below the ocean floor, we had found a layer originally formed on land, not in the ocean. Another surprise followed when the scientists subjected the sample to X-ray CT scans. Visible in the CT images was a dense network of roots, so pristinely preserved that individual cell structures were discernible. In the fine-grained clay and silt of the forest soil layer, the researchers found fossilized pollen and spores from plants, including some from the first flowering plants ever found at such high southern latitudes. And in the words of Ulrich Zalsman of Northumbria University, the numerous plant remains indicate that 93 to 83 million years ago, the coast of West Antarctica was a swampy landscape in which temperate rainforests grew, similar to the forests that can still be found, say, on New Zealand's South Island. But how could a temperate rainforest exist at about 82 degrees latitude south? 900 kilometers from the South Pole's location 90 million years ago, where the forest would have been in darkness each year during four months of polar night? Over the past 140 million years, the warmest climate on Earth occurred between 115 to 80 million years ago. Scientists have known from previous studies that tropical sea surface temperatures could have been as high as 35 degrees Celsius and the sea level was 170 meters higher than it is today. This new sediment core was the first opportunity to better understand the southern polar region's climate during the mid-Cretaceous. There were several steps to the analysis. First off, the scientists assessed the climatic conditions under which the plant's modern descendants live. Then they analyzed the soil sample, looking for biological and geochemical temperature and precipitation indicators to better understand rainfall amounts, 
as well as air and water temperatures in the ancient West Antarctic rainforest. Put together, these analyses provided a preliminary glimpse of the temperate climate where this 90 million year old swampy rainforest once thrived. There was moderately abundant rainfall. The annual mean air temperature was 12 degrees Celsius. In summer, the temperature, on average, was 19 degrees Celsius, and water temperature in the rivers and swamps reached 20 degrees Celsius. According to climate models run by the scientists, these conditions could have existed if there was dense vegetation across Antarctica with little or no ice sheet present, and carbon dioxide levels were higher than previously thought. These findings illustrate the powerful effect that carbon dioxide has on the planet and the importance of polar ice sheets in cooling the planet. As Torsten Bickert, a geoscientist at the University of Bremen said, we now know that there could easily be four straight months without sunlight in the Cretaceous. But because the carbon dioxide concentration was so high, the climate around the South Pole was nevertheless temperate without ice masses. But a crucial question remains. How did the Earth subsequently cool down, bringing back the ice sheets? Well, scientists haven't been able to answer that question. Understanding how this cooling occurred is going to be an important area of investigation for climatologists. Bottom line, analysis of fossil remains of a 90 million year old rainforest discovered in a sediment core sample from Antarctica's Amundsen Sea indicates a surprisingly mild climate. Climate models indicate this was possible because there were barely any ice sheets at the South Pole and significantly high concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Number 11. 66 million year old egg in Antarctica. Estimated to be around 66 million years ago, the football sized egg of an ancient marine reptile was found in Antarctica. It became the first known fossil soft shell egg to have been left on the continent, and its existence has somewhat upeaned our understanding. As lead author Lucas Legendre, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Texas Austin's Jackson School of Geosciences said in a statement, It is from an animal the size of a large dinosaur, but it is completely unlike a dinosaur egg. It is most similar to the eggs of lizards and snakes, but it is from a truly giant relative of these animals. On the other hand, note that it was previously believed that giant marine reptiles from the Cretaceous did not lay eggs, but the mysterious leather orb would appear to contradict that. Scientists referred to the more than 28 by 18 centimeter stone, like fossil, simply as the thing. The visibly collapsed and folded thin-shelled egg is among the largest to have ever been described, second only to the elephant bird's egg and its structure is similar to most extant lizards and the snakes. That points towards whoever laid it having an ovoviviparous lifestyle, whereby the egg develops inside of the mother and hatches immediately after being laid. The same was not true for the giant elephant birds. These flightless megafaunal birds were once widespread across Madagascar, weighing 500 kilograms and stretching three meters tall. They were so large, it's thought one egg could feed an entire human family. Like birds today, the elephant bird's egg had a hard shell, unlike the soft shell football, our Mosasaur, left in Antarctica. As the largest eggs the planet's ever seen, elephant bird eggs could measure 33 centimeters long and with a liquid capacity of 8.5 liters. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, that's equivalent to seven ostrich eggs, 183 chicken eggs, or over 12,000 hummingbird eggs, making it the largest single cell known to have existed on Earth. Both of these egg-laying behemoths are now extinct, and the title for largest egg alive today goes to the ostrich. According to Discover Wildlife, the largest egg on record came out of an ostrich in Sweden that unleashed 2.589 kilograms of shell-laden albumin. Boiling that would no doubt have taken a hot minute, but did you know there's a way to tell if an egg is hard-boiled without opening it? Number 10. 
alien-like giant phantom jellyfish off the coast of Antarctica. Giant phantom jellyfish, known as Stygiomedusa gigantea, one of the deep sea's largest invertebrate predators that look like UFO spaceships with thick ribbons streaming from their undersides has been spotted in frigid waters off Antarctica. The alien-like jellyfish met the guests while they were riding in a submersible deployed by cruise line operator Viking in early 2022. Researchers estimated that the jellyfish were longer than 5 meters, with one stretching to at least 10 meters in length. The jellyfish were spotted at depths of 80 meters, 87 meters, and 280 meters. And that's worth noting because giant phantom jellyfish primarily occupy depths of below 1,000 meters, but they are encountered higher up in the Southern Ocean, or Antarctic Ocean. Sadly, up to now, we still don't know why they hang out in relatively shallow waters around Antarctica. One potential explanation is that the jellyfish swim higher up to expose themselves to ultraviolet radiation, which will rid them of parasites. Another hypothesis is that the upwelling deep water found around the Antarctic continent simply carries them upward. Hopefully, the upcoming observations will lead to a better understanding of giant phantom jellyfish's lives. Number 9. Warm Subglacial Caves Under Antarctica Along with subglacial lakes, rivers, and aquifers, it turns out some intriguing caves lie hidden beneath the ice of Antarctica. A 2017 study led by the Australian National University and written up in Polar Biology identified a network of subglacial caves in the vicinity of Mount Erebus, an active volcano whose steam excavated the caverns. These steam-hollowed caves are warm up to 25 degrees Celsius and well illuminated by sunlight penetrating their entrances and through thin, overlying ice. Soil samples collected by the research team within the caves contained DNA from algae, mosses, and animal life. And according to lead researcher Seridwen Fraser, the results from this study give us a tantalizing glimpse of what might live beneath the ice in Antarctica. There might even be new species of animals and plants. In addition, the researcher team also suspects that other subglacial cavern systems may exist in association with other Antarctic volcanoes. Number 8. Strange life forms on a boulder beneath Antarctica's ice shelves. Researchers were drilling through 900 meters of ice in the Filchner Rona ice shelf situated on the southeastern Weddell Sea when they stumbled upon unexpected creatures firmly attached to a rock, living in the darkness and sub-zero temperatures. A collection of stationary animals, sponges, and potentially several previously unknown species were among the discoveries. Animals like these aren't expected to live in these extreme locations because they are so far from sunlight and any obvious source of food. According to marine biologist Hugh Griffiths, lead author of a new study documenting the discovery, it was a genuine surprise to see these animals there. It's about 160 kilometers further under the ice shelf than we had ever seen a sponge before. The accidental discovery was made by a team of geologists who were drilling through the ice to collect mud samples but came across the rock harboring these strange creatures. The area beneath giant floating ice shelves is one of the least known habitats on Earth. To get a glance at what is happening below a huge mass of ice, boreholes are drilled through it and cameras lowered down. The total area that humans have seen below the ice shelves adds up to about the size of a tennis court, according to Griffiths, who has worked with the British Antarctic Survey for more than 20 years. Thus, finding the sponges in such a remote location was what made this discovery particularly perplexing. In the words of Griffiths, somehow some really specialized members of the filter feeding community can survive, he said. They could be brand new species or they could just be incredibly hardy version of what normally lives in Antarctica. We just don't know. My guess would be that they are potentially a new species. If they are living somewhere as tough as this, they are probably specially adapted to being there. 
There is a good chance they might go weeks, months, and years without food. You have to be pretty hardy to cope with that. This could be an opportunity to learn from these hardy organisms and how they survive in extreme conditions, be it for medical, engineering, or other scientific purposes. Of course, smarter technology and ideas are needed to get closer to these animals, he said. And more research is required to really get a better and bigger picture of what's going on beneath the ice. It's this idea that there is a whole world that we know nothing about. The idea that there are lots more of these rocks down there. That would constitute a huge habitat that we didn't know existed. There are so many questions. There is life on Earth that isn't playing by the rules that biologists understand. Number 7. One million year old DNA. DNA from ancient microorganisms, some of which dates back to roughly one million years ago, has been discovered beneath the seafloor in Antarctica. The DNA is the oldest ever discovered from seafloor sediments, a new study shows. Scientists accidentally collected the unusual genetic samples, known as sedimentary ancient DNA, or CETA DNA, up to 178 meters beneath the seafloor as part of a 2019 survey led by the International Ocean Discovery Program in the Scotia Sea, north of mainland Antarctica. In the new study, which was published online in the journal Nature Communications, researchers analyzed the CETA DNA samples for the first time. The team looked closely at damage patterns within the recovered DNA fragments to establish exactly how old they were. The oldest fragments clocked in at around 1 million years old. Until now, the oldest CETA DNA, which was found locked inside Arctic permafrost, dated to around 650,000 years ago. As study lead author Linda Armbrecht, a researcher at the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies at the University of Tasmania in Australia, said in a statement, the fragments are the oldest authenticated marine CETA DNA discovered to date. The samples have been exceptionally well preserved due to low temperatures, reduced oxygen concentrations, and an absence of UV radiation. Scientists aren't certain which species the oldest CDA DNA belongs to, although it is definitely from a eukaryote, meaning it comes from an animal, plant, or fungi, and not from a bacteria or virus. However, a majority of the DNA samples belong to diatoms, a type of phytoplankton that still exists in the world's oceans today and forms the basis of most marine food webs. The SATA DNA record from the Scotia Sea shows that there was likely an explosion in the abundance of diatoms about 540,000 years ago, right around the time Earth was undergoing a natural warming phase. At this time, increased ice loss from Antarctica's ice sheet and rising ocean temperatures likely fueled rapid diatom growth and reproduction. The researchers wrote that human-caused climate change will likely create similar conditions. The team believes it is imperative to learn more about how ecosystems changed during earlier warming periods to better understand how they will change again in the future. Either way, Antarctica is one of the most vulnerable regions to climate change on Earth, so studying this polar marine ecosystem's past and present responses to environmental change is a matter of urgency. Number 6. Underneath Mountain Lakes There are many things hidden under the thick layers of ice in Antarctica, and some of them are already discovered. One such discovery is the underground lakes, Scientists first find the lakes in 1970 with help of echo sounding, which is very similar to using radars to locate aircraft in the sky. The estimated amount of lakes under the three kilometers of ice is 400, but this estimation is approximate. And scientists suggest that there could be twice as many lakes there because there are many regions that weren't examined. Most likely, these lakes were formed after the separation of Antarctica from Gondwanaland, which was a supercontinent many years ago. Number 5. Oil in the White Continent Did you know that there's oil in Antarctica? But it's too dangerous to extract it, and we'd better leave it where it is. 
The Madrid Protocol, signed in 1991 in the capital of Spain, regulates the environmental protection of Antarctica and bans all commercial mining until 2048. Today, there are no plans for commercial mining in Antarctica and no known plans to reverse the collective decision for Antarctica's environmental protection. In fact, the weather, quantity of ice and distance from industrialized areas make the extraction of oil very expensive and dangerous. So let's hope that international agreements won't be broken because of someone's greed or ignorance. Number four, burrowing ghost anemones beneath the Ross ice shelf. In 2010-2011, as part of the Antarctic Geologic Drilling Program, a 260-meter-deep, 30-centimeters diameter borehole was drilled five miles back from the front of the Ross Ice Shelf, and a cylindrical remotely operated vehicle known as the Submersible Capable of Under-Ice Navigation and Imaging deployed down it to provide visuals for the retrieval of a sediment core sample from the seafloor. But once the submersible capable of under ice navigation and imaging exited the bore hole, instead of surveying barren waters as expected, incredibly its camera revealed an unusual and likely unique marine biological community dominated by wispy, ghost-like anemones living upside down inside burrows in the lower surface of the ice shelf itself. Subsequently named Edward Ciela Andrillae, after the program, they were the first reported species of sea anemone to live in ice. As Frank Rack, executive director of the Antarctic Geologic Drilling Program, said, they had found a whole new ecosystem that no one had ever seen before. What started out as an engineering test of the remotely operated vehicle during its first deployment through a thick ice shelf turned into a significant and exciting biological discovery. Exactly how the animal lives or indeed thrives in such an unusual habitat is still a mystery, and the unexpected anemones weren't the only discovery to be made by the Antarctic Geologic Drilling Program. A menagerie of bizarre creatures was caught on film, including upside-down swimming fish using the underside of the ice shelf like a seafloor, and an unidentified cylinder-shaped creature the scientists dubbed the egg roll. Number three, who really discovered Antarctica? 200 years since the discovery of Antarctica, the frozen continent is known as a hotbed of scientific exploration and a place of adventure and icy peril. But who really discovered the new continent? That depends on how you define discovered. The fateful spotting could be attributed to a Russian expedition on January 27, 1820 or a British one just three days later. By the early 19th century, explorers had been on the hunt for a massive southern continent they called Terra Australis Incognita, unknown southern land. This vast landmass, it was thought, would balance out the land in the northern hemisphere. But early attempts to find the continent had flopped. Captain James Cook had spent three years looking for it during his second voyage from 1772-1775. The expedition took Cook and his men into the Antarctic Circle, but the explorer eventually called it quits after failing to find the continent. However, Cook was convinced there was more to the story. As he wrote at the expedition's end, I firmly believe that there is a tract of land near the pole which is the source of most of the ice which is spread over this vast southern ocean. But the risk one runs in exploring a coast in these unknown and icy seas is so very great that I can be bold to say that no man will ever venture farther than I have done and that the lands which may lie to the south will never be explored. As it turned out, Cook had been just 80 miles from the continent's coast at one point in his journey. Cook's travels spurred on other explorers, but none succeeded and the quest for the unknown southern land was considered impossible. Then the search for Antarctica heated up again, thanks to international rivalries and the potential profits from seal skins hunted in frigid waters. 
global competition for territory and economic dominance prompted explorers from Russia, England, and the United States toward Antarctica. In 1819, Russia tasked Fabian von Bellingshausen with going further south than Cook. On January 27, 1820, he looked toward solid ice that was likely an ice shelf attached to Antarctic land, now known as Queen Maud Land. Unbeknownst to him, he had company. Three days later, British naval officer Edward Bransfield spotted the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. Though von Bellingshausen was technically the first to see the unknown continent, writes historian David Day, his accomplishment was hidden for decades by an incorrect translation of his journal that led historians to assume he hadn't actually seen land. Americans weren't far behind John Davis, a sealer and explorer, was the first person to step foot on Antarctic land in 1821. The race to find Antarctica sparked competition to locate the South Pole and stoked another rivalry. Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen found it on December 14, 1911. Just over a month later, Robert Falcon Scott found it too. He turned back with disastrous results. Scott's entire party perished, and the expedition is still regarded as a failure. But when Amundsen spoke to the Royal Geographic Society in a ceremony honoring his achievement, writes historian Edward J. Larson, attendees cheered for the explorer's dogs, but not for him. Antarctica may be chilly, but the passions it stokes in the hearts of explorers and their champions are fiery indeed. Number 2. Glossopterus and the Terra Nova Expedition Robert Falcon Scott's 1910-1913 British Antarctic Expedition via the Terra Nova is best known as a tragedy. Scott and four comrades reaching the South Pole just shy of Roald Amundsen's Norwegian team, who had become the first people to set foot at this remote extreme, and then dying on their arduous trek back to the expedition's base on Ross Island. But there's a fascinating paleontologic, geologic dimension to the Terra Nova story. When a rescue party discovered the corpses of Scott, Edward Adrian Wilson, and Henry Robinson Bowers on the Ross Ice Shelf in November 1912, they also found fossil specimens in the tent, samples the men had continued hauling despite their weakened condition and mortal struggle. Scott's party had collected the fossils from a moraine along the Beardmore Glacier on February 8, 1912 as they journeyed back from the pole. Among the rocks gathered, Scott noted, a piece of coal with beautifully traced leaves in layers and some excellently preserved impressions of thick stems showing cellular structure. In 1914, the Cambridge University botanist Albert Seward identified the plant fossils as belonging to the prehistoric genus Glossopteris, which had previously been found in India, Australia, South America, and Southern Africa. Several hundred million years old, the Glossopterus fossils Scott and his men retrieved helped prove that Antarctic had once been connected with those other southern hemisphere landmasses in the supercontinent Gondwana. The find also helped Alfred Wegener formulate his groundbreaking theory of continental drift, which paved the way for our modern understanding of plate tectonics. Number 1. Endurance Shipwreck the tale of the endurance shipwreck is one of the most remarkable stories of human endurance, resilience, and leadership in the annals of exploration. The saga began in August 1914 when Sir Ernest Shackleton and his crew set sail aboard the Endurance from South Georgia Island in the hopes of being the first to traverse the Antarctic continent. The Endurance, a sturdy wooden vessel, was to carry Shackleton and his men across the icy waters of the Weddell Sea and serve as their base for the Antarctic expedition. However, their ambitious plans were soon thwarted as the ship encountered unusually heavy pack ice early in their journey. Despite their best efforts to navigate through the ice, the Endurance became trapped, immobile, and encased in the freezing grip of the Weddell Sea. For months, the crew endured the harsh Antarctic winter, their ship locked in ice. As temperatures plummeted and the ice pressed against the endurance, it became clear that their situation was dire. 
Shackleton's leadership was tested as he faced the daunting challenge of keeping morale high and ensuring the safety and well-being of his men. Despite their precarious predicament, Shackleton maintained a steadfast resolve and unwavering optimism. He organized activities to keep the crew occupied, maintained a strict routine, and instilled a sense of camaraderie among the men. But as the Antarctic summer approached and the ice showed no signs of releasing its grip, Shackleton realized that their only hope for survival lay in abandoning the endurance and making their way across the treacherous ice on foot. In October 1915, after being trapped in the ice for nearly 10 months, the endurance finally succumbed to the immense pressure, its hull breached and crushed by the relentless force of the ice. With their ship lost, Shackleton and his crew were forced to retreat to the ice flows, salvaging what supplies they could and establishing a camp on the frozen expanse. The crew's situation was desperate as they faced the harsh Antarctic environment with limited provisions and no means of communication with the outside world. Yet Shackleton remained resolute in his determination to ensure the survival of his men. Drawing upon his leadership skills and resourcefulness, he formulated a daring plan to lead his crew to safety. Their journey across the ice was grueling and fraught with danger. They endured bitter cold, blizzards, and the constant threat of starvation. However, through sheer determination and teamwork, they persevered. After months of hardship, they finally reached the open water, where they launched their lifeboats and set sail for the uninhabited Elephant Island. Upon reaching Elephant Island, Shackleton faced yet another daunting challenge, finding a way to rescue his crew from their remote and desolate location. In a daring display of seamanship, Shackleton and a small crew embarked on a perilous voyage across some of the most treacherous seas in the world to reach South Georgia Island, where they knew they could find help. After an incredible journey lasting over two weeks, Shackleton and his companions reached South Georgia Island and made contact with a whaling station. Despite the odds stacked against them, Shackleton's leadership and unwavering determination had ensured the survival of his entire crew. The story of the Endurance shipwreck is not just one of survival against the odds, but also a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. On the other hand, this story also reminds us of Antarctica's harsh and extreme environment, characterized by frigid temperatures, high winds, and vast expanses of ice and snow. After all, Antarctica has been a source of fascination for explorers and adventurers for centuries. Its extreme conditions, pristine beauty, and remoteness make it a unique and challenging destination for those seeking to push the boundaries of human exploration. As exploration and research in the region continue, it is likely that Antarctica will continue to inspire wonder and curiosity for years to come. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.